So let's examine one application of the first law of thermodynamics and let's discuss isothermal processes. So what exactly is an isothermal process? An isothermal process is a process in which the temperature of our closed gaseous system remains constant. So let's suppose we take a closed gaseous system that is composed of ideal monatomic gas molecules. So that means that the internal energy of our closed gaseous system is equal to the product of 3 times n times r times t divided by 2 where n is the number of gas molecules, r is the universal gas constant, and t is the temperature given in Kelvin. So if we're dealing with a closed gaseous system, that means there is no exchange of molecules. So our n, the number of moles of gas, remains constant. And if our system is undergoing an isothermal process, the temperature also remains remains constant. So that means we can conclude that the internal energy of a closed ideal gaseous system undergoing an isothermal process is constant. Because if T is constant, R is constant, and N is constant, this entire fraction remains constant. Now, According to the first law of thermodynamics, the change in internal energy of our closed ideal gaseous system is equal to the sum of the Q and the W, where Q is simply the amount of energy that flows into our system as a result of a change or a difference in temperature, and W is the work done on or by our gaseous system. So because we are assuming our closed gaseous system is undergoing isothermal process, that means that this remains constant. And if this remains constant, then the change in internal energy remains zero. So zero is equal to the sum of Q and W. That implies that Q is equal to negative W. That means that the amount of energy that flows into our our closed gaseous system as a result of a difference in temperature is equal to the work done by our gaseous system on the environment. So once again we conclude that for a closed ideal gas system undergoing an isothermal process in which the temperature remains constant, the amount of energy that flows into the system as a result of a difference in temperature between the system and the surroundings is equal to the work done by the system on the surroundings. So let's recall the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law states that the pressure times the volume of our closed gaseous system is equal to the product of N, R, and T. Now, if we're dealing with a closed system that is undergoing an isothermal process, the N is constant and the T is constant. So that means the product of P times W also remains constant as long as we're dealing with an isothermal process. So, let's plot this on the xy plane. So, if we plot this on the xy plane, the y axis is the pressure and the x axis is the volume. And we obtain the following curve. Now, each point on the curve represents the state of the system at that particular moment in time. For example, if we examine this curve and we choose a point, let's call it point A1, then at this moment in time, the pressure is given by this quantity and the volume of our gaseous system is given by this quantity. Now notice, by increasing the temperature to a higher constant, we increase this entire constant, so that means we shift 
this entire curve upward as shown. And so now at our point A2, the new volume is given by this quantity and the new pressure is given by this quantity. And each one of these curves is known as an isotherm. So notice the isotherm, the curve will drop down, will shift downward if we decrease the pressure. If we decrease the pressure, this constant decreases and we shift our curve downward. Now, let's actually look at an example of a closed ideal gaseous system that is undergoing isothermal process. So let's suppose we have a container fitted with a movable piston and between the space between the bottom of the container that is closed and this piston we have our ideal monatomic gas molecules as shown by the orange dots. So if the container is brought close to a heat source as shown and if the heat source is large so that the temperature of the heat source remains constant, the piston will move because these molecules will exert a force on the piston. So if we bring this heat source and our ideal gas is undergoing an isothermal process, the temperature of that ideal gas remains constant. So that means the energy that flows in to our ideal gas system from this large heat source does not go into increasing the kinetic energy but rather it goes into doing work on the surroundings on the piston and moving this piston upward. Once again, if the container is brought close to a heat source and the piston is allowed to move slowly, energy will flow from the heat source into our ideal gas and that is given by the Q. Now, since the temperature of the gas is constant, that means the energy does not go into increasing the kinetic energy of the molecules because our T remains constant and the internal energy also remains constant. So all that energy will then be transferred as work done by the gas to push the piston against the surroundings. So all that energy, instead of going into the the gas molecules into increasing the kinetic energy of the gas molecules, that energy goes into moving this piston. So the ideal gas does work on the surroundings by moving the piston upward. So the volume increases and the pressure decreases so that this remains constant, so that the product of P and V remains constant.